1 Samuel chapter 17 Now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle and were gathered together at Soko which belongs to Judah. They encamped between Soko and Azekah in Hempes Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and they encamped in the valley of Elah and drew up in battle array against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on a mountain on one side and the Israel stood on a mountain on another side with a valley between them. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of bronze. And he had bronze greaves on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed six hundred shekels, and a shield-bearer went before him. Then he stood and cried, cried out to the armies of Israel, and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourself, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and kill us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and Israel heard these words of Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was a son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, who had eight sons, and the man was old, advanced in years, in the days of Saul. The three oldest sons of Jesse had gone to follow Saul to the battle. The names of his three sons who went to battle were Eliab, the firstborn, next to him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest, and the three oldest followed Saul. But David occasionally went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistines drew near and presented himself forty days, morning and evening. Then Jesse said to his son David, Take now for your brothers of Epa of this dried grain and these ten loaves, and run to your brothers at camp. And carry these ten cheeses to the captain of their thousand, and see how your brothers fare, and bring back news of them. Now Saul and they, all other men of Israel, were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. So David rose early in the morning, left to the sheep with the keeper, and took the things, and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to fight and shouting for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in a battle array, army against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army, and came and greeted his brothers. Then, as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines, and he spoke according to the same words. So David heard them. And all of the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. So the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel, and it shall that be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter, and give his father's house exemption in Israel. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of living God? And the people answered him in this manner, saying, so shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab the oldest brother heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David, and he said, Why did you come down here, and with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, What I have done now, is there not a cause? Then he turned from him towards another, and said the same thing, and these people answered him as first ones did. And when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul, and he sent for him.
Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep, and when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from his mouth, and when it arose against me, I caught it by his beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver free from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. So Saul clothed David in his armor, and he put a bronze helmet on his head, and he also clothed him with a coat of mail. And David fastened his sword to his armor, and he tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Then he took his shaft in his hand, and he chose for himself five smooth stones and from the brook, and put them in a shepherd's bag, in a pouch where he had, and his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David, and the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and said, saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and good-looking. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, I will give you your flesh to the birds of the airs and the beasts of the fields. Then David said to the Philistine, You come with me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp to the Philistine, to the birds of the air, and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then and all his assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it was so when the Philistine arose and came and drew uh, near to meet David. So David hastened and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone, and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead, so that the stone sank to his forehead, and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took over his sword, and drew it out of his sheath, and killed him, cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that the champion was dead, they fled. Now the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines as far as the entrance of the valley and to the gates of Ekron, and wounded of the Philistines fell the road of Sharim, and even as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the children of Israel returned from chasing the Philistines and plundered their tents. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. Now when Saul saw David going out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As your soul lives, O king, I do not know. And the king said, Inquire whose son this young man is. Then, as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? And David answered, I am the servant of your servant, Jesse, the Bethlehemite. 1 Samuel chapter 18 And it was so when he had finished speaking to Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Saul took him the, that day and would not let him go home to his father's house any more. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul.
And Jonathan took off the robe that was on him and gave it to David with his armor, even to his sword and his bow and his belt. So David went out wherever Saul sent him and behaved wisely, and Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Now it had happened as they were coming home when David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistine that the woman had come out of all cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with Tarmonius with joy and with musical instruments. So the woman sang as they danced and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Then Saul was very angry, and the saying displeased him, and he said, They have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. Now what more can he have but the kingdom? So Saul eyed David from that day forward. And it happened on the next day that the distressing spirit of God came upon Saul, and he professed inside the house. So David played the music with his hand as at other times, but there was a spear in Saul's hand. Hand. And Saul cast a spear, for he said, I will pin David to the wall with it. But David escaped his presence twice. Now Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him, but he had departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from his presence, and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Therefore, when Saul saw that he behaved very wisely, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, because he went out and came in before them. Then Saul said to David, Here is my older daughter Merab. I will give her to you as a wife, only be valiant for me and fight the Lord's battle. For Saul thought, Let my hand not be against him, and let the hand of the Philistines be against him. So David said to Saul, Who am I, and what is my wife or my father's family in Israel, that I should be son-in-law to the king? But it happened at the time when Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given to Adriel the Meholathite as a wife. Now Michal, Saul's daughter, loved David. And they told Saul that the thing pleased him. So Saul said, I will give her to him, and that she may snare to him, and that she and that the hand of the Philistines will be against him. Therefore Saul said to David a second time, You shall be my son in law today. And Saul commanded his servants communicate with David secretly and say, Look, the king has delight in you, and all his servants love you. Now therefore become a king's son in law. So Saul's servant spoke those words in the hearing of David, and David said, Does it seem to you a light thing to be a king's son-in-law, seeing I am poor and lightly esteemed man? And the servants of Saul said, told him, saying, In this manner David spoke. Then Saul said, Thus you shall say to David, The king does not desire any dowry but one hundred foreskins of the Philistines to take vengeance of the king's enemies. But Saul thought to make David fall by the hands of Philistines. So when his servants told David that these words, it pleased David well to become the king's son-in-law. Now the days had not expired, therefore David arose and went, he and his men, and killed two hundred men of the Philistines. And David brought their four skins, and they gave them full in count to the king, that he might become the king's son-in-law. Then Saul gave him Michael his daughter as a wife. Then Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David, and that Michael, Saul's daughter, loved him. And Saul was still more afraid of David, so Saul became David's enemy continually. Then the princes of Philistines went out to war, so it was wherever they went out that David behaved more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name became highly esteemed. 1 Samuel chapter 19 now Saul spoke to Jonathan his son and all, to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. So Jonathan told David, saying, My father Saul seeks to kill you. Therefore, please be on your guard until morning and stay in a secret place and hide. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are and I will speak with my father about you. Then what I observe I will tell you. Now Jonathan spoke well 
of David to Saul his father and said to him, Let not the king sin against his servant against David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his works have been very good to the towards you. For he took his life in his hands and killed the Philistines, and the Lord brought a great salvation for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. Why then will you sin against innocent blood to kill David without a cause? So Saul heeded the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swore, As the Lord lives, he shall not be killed. Then Jonathan called David, and Jonathan told him the, all these things. Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence in ten times past. And there there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines and struck them with a mighty blow, and they fled from him. Now the distressing spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with a spear in his hand, and David was playing music with his hands. Then Saul sought to pin David to the wall with his spear, but he slipped away from Saul's presence, and he drove the spear into the wall, so David fled and escaped that night. Saul also sent messengers to David's house to watch him and to kill him in the morning. And Michael, David's wives, told him, saying, If you do not save your life tonight, tomorrow you will be killed. So Michael let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michael took an image and let it in the bed, put a cover of goat's hair for his head, and covered it with clothes. So when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. Then Saul sent the messengers back to see David, saying, bring, up, bring him up to me in bed, that I may kill him. And when the messengers had come in, there was the image in the bed with a cover of goat's hair for his head. Then Saul said to Michael, Why have you deceived me like this and sent my enemy away, so that he has escaped? And Michael answered Saul, He said to me, Let me go, why should I kill you? So David fled and escaped and went to Samuel at Ramah and told him that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and stayed in Nicoth. Now it was Saul saying, Take note, David is at Nicoth at Ramah. Then Saul sent messengers to David, and when they saw the group prophets professing, and Samuel standing as leader over them, the Spirit of God came upon the messenger of Saul, and they also professed. And when Saul was told, he sent the other messengers, that they likewise. And then Saul sent messengers again the third time, and he professed too. Then he also went to Ramah and came to the great wall which is at Sechu, and he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And someone said, Indeed, they are at Nikoth at Ramah. So he went there. Then the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, and he went on and until he came to Ramah. And he also stripped off his clothes and prophesied before Samuel in like manner, and lay down naked all day, all night. Therefore they say, Is Saul also among the prophets?